Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how we pour and finish a concrete patio. We're going to put a boom finish on this. This patio is about 6 feet wide and 40 feet long. And we're going to go through the process of pouring the concrete, getting it level, getting it screeded, getting it both loaded. And then I'm going to show you how we cut in our joints by hand, how we edge the concrete, and how we put the boom finish on it. And then at the end of the video I'm going to show you what it looks like to have that inch and a half overhang. You can see when we form this up on the outside of that foundation, we formed up an inch and a half overhang for this to hide that seam. And I made a video showing you just how to do that. I'll have that linked up at the end of this video. So I came back a month later after they had the house all framed up. And I, I show you just what the patio looks like once the house is framed up and we strip those boards off so you can see what that inch and a half overhang is going to look like. But right now what Darren and I are doing is we're getting the concrete poured in here. We're using a 4000 PSI concrete. It's got microfiber mesh in it. It's got air entrainment in it. And we also put a water reducer in it to help to help with strength. And the water reducer, they, they batch that right in at the concrete plant when they batch the truck out and that just helps you be able to pour the concrete a little bit more workable a little bit looser and not and not hurt the strength of the concrete so what I'm doing now is I got my DeWalt pencil vibrator and I'm vibrating out any little air pockets that might show up against the form when I strip that form off so I use that pencil vibrator for just about everything when we're going to have a face that's going to show like that so I highly recommend getting one of those if you pour a lot of concrete and you know it just saves you from tapping it with a hammer um, it just works much better than tapping it with a hammer so now what we're doing is we're getting our edges mag to grade this patio slopes a little bit over an inch from the building out towards the parking lot there where they're going to be driving the cars in and we want to make sure that slope is perfect so we mag we snapped a chalk line on that that inside form up there where the house is the pressure treated one and then we use the laser and set our forms about an inch and a quarter lower so we got just about a quarter inch per, per foot pitch on this slope and now I'm just getting it screeded we always screed something by hand, you know, when it's got a slope to it. We want to make sure the concrete doesn't sag at all and it holds its shape. So I'm just screeding this by hand, kind of kick screeding it a little bit as I go. Darren's raking the concrete behind me, making sure I'm not low or I'm not real high. And that's how we get it poured, basically like that. Now what I'm doing is I'm running the bull float over it. And I'm using that, that bull float head from Superior. And all you need to do with that is just twist the handle a little bit to change the pitch on the bull float, you know, from when you're pushing it forward like this. And then you twist the handle a little bit and it, it changes the pitch on the back of the bull float so you can just pull it backwards. And we really like that head. We want to thank Superior for that. They're letting us try that out and show you guys. So I would highly recommend you know, if, you, if you've got a bull float and you're not real happy with uh, the head on it, I would recommend getting one of those. I'll have a link for that down in the description. You can go check that out. And I'm going really slow, as you notice, when I bull float this. I don't want to pull back too fast on the bull float, or I'm going to make the concrete sag a little bit because of the slope. And I'm not going all the way up to the form in the back either. I don't want to create a little divot right next to the form when I change the slope on the bull float. You can see I stay a few inches away from that and that just makes it easier to finish later on down the road if you don't have that big divot right next to the form itself. So Darren and I are just gonna get this screeded, finish that off, I'll get it, I'll get it bull floated and then we're gonna show you how I cut the grooves in. So I'm using this, this uh, joiner from Cadillac Concrete Products and that allows us just to cut the joints in really early because of the width of that. So it's kind of like a walk behind joiner. And I'm just laying the screed down as a guide because I want to make sure these joints stay really, really straight. 
fucking true. So we'll just get it cut in initially with this joiner, and then we'll just use a regular hand joiner later on when we go to finish, just to make sure they stay clean and they look really nice. But this thing allows you to get them cut in early and you just stay ahead of the game. So now what Darren's doing is he's going, right after I got those joints cut in, he's going around and, and doing the edge and getting the first pass on the edger. And we're just using like a half inch radius edger. We like the brass ones, the small brass ones. Um, we just, that's, those are the ones we're comfortable with. You can use any type of edger really. But initial, initially he's just going to get this cut in and uh, you know the concrete's dry enough so I can get on it for the first pass with the mag. So I'm mag floating it out, smoothing out the surface, bringing up some paste. I got my, my concrete skids I'm using and the reason I'm using those is just because I can't reach it all from the outside by hand and it just makes it a little faster. I can float right on top of the surface with those. I'll have a link for those down in the description. If you guys don't have some of those and you're finishing concrete, you know, that's going to save you a bunch of time if you have some of those skids. You can see I'm, I just went through the joiner there with the hand joiner just to clean it up after I magged it. And Darren's edging this front piece where they'll walk from the patio into the garage. But we're going to get this mag floated out and then we're going to let it set for a little bit longer and let it get a little firmer. And then we'll we'll do it again before we broom. So it just all depends on the timing. It's pretty cold out today. It's in the 40s, so the stuff's not drying like like super fast. If this was out in the sun, it was the middle of the summer, we'd probably only have to do this once, and then we'd have somebody running the broom over it right now. But we want to make sure the broom, the finished broom marks look really nice, and they're nice and fine, not too rough being this is the entryway to a residential house. So here we are, we're about 45 minutes later, and I'm going over it again. Now where we have air entrainment in this, you know what, we, we live up in Maine, we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. We don't typically hand trial the, the finish. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna take the chance on sealing in any of the air entrainment or any moisture in the surface that still might be coming out because that can lead to some scaling in the concrete later on down the road. So we make sure we don't seal up the surface too early by just, you know, we'll just mag float it twice. You know, you might say, well, the broom's going to open it back up. You know, hey, we've tried that. We've been doing this. I've been doing this 40 years, and we've just had better luck if we mag float it twice and then broom it versus mag it and then hand trowel it. With air entrainment, you got to be real careful just make sure you don't seal in any of that air that still might be escaping out through the surface. You can see how Darren's just giving that a nice light broom finish. We're using a two foot broom there and he'll make a few passes and then he'll clean off the paste with that bucket. He'll just run it across the top of that bucket, clean off a little bit of the paste. If he needs to, he can wash it. You know, if he sees the, the broom is leaving some like little concrete balls behind, we call them snots. Um, let me know what you guys call them down in the down in the comments. But if it if it doesn't look like a real nice neat broom finish, then he'll actually dip it in the water, clean it out, and then pound all the water out of the broom before he makes another pass. But that's the basic process for finishing concrete with a broom finish right there. You know, now he's going to go around and put that finish edge on it. Just to, just to dress up the edge a little bit. Make sure that edge isn't brittle. You know, we don't like leaving a square edge on anything that's going to be finished, uh, like a finished patio, uh, entryway to a door, entryway to a garage door opening. We always like to round the edges because it helps strengthen them. Now Darren's just touching up the joints now, making sure those joints look nice and clean and neat. He's pretty fussy about that. And then he'll run that edger on the other side and just keep going until he's done. So I'm going to show you what this looks like about a month later. It's been about four or five weeks. And I came out and shot some more video after the forms were stripped off, after the, the buildings framed up. So take a look at that.
All right, guys, so this is what the patio with the inch and a half overhang is going to look like to the homeowners when they drive in their driveway. Now, I realize they haven't got all the backfill done yet. As you can see by the garage floor, they got to come up another six inches, maybe eight inches, but that's still going to leave that lip exposed. So by overhanging that an inch and a half, it does really help hide that seam pretty good. So let's get out, take a little bit better video of it you know at uh looking down on it like if he was walking up to it all right so here's what it's going to look like remember the grade's going to come up at least even with the top of that garage floor so there's only going to be about maybe an, an inch or two of uh exposure there that's going to be up in the ground but that's what it looks like when it's overhung an inch and a half now if that wasn't if it wasn't overhanging an inch and a half, it would be, you know, obviously right flush with the concrete foundation. And you'd really see that seam. That seam would stick out a lot. So this is what it looks like. See, they got sawdust all over the patio. But they're still working here. So get down and get a view here. You can see that overhang. You can see how that hides that seam really good. That's the finished product. So that's, that's how you overhang a patio an inch and a half.